The Informac Minis are amazing and they continue to impress even months after release. But there's a lot of different options whenever you go to actually configure your Mac Mini. So in this video, I'm gonna help walk you through all the different options to make sure that you're picking out the right Mac Mini for your budget and for your use case. I'm gonna have links for a couple of my favorite models in the description below. I've also got a link where you can go fill out a form on my website if you want any personalized help picking one out. My favorite places to order Mac computers are either directly from Apple on b &H, or also from Amazon. Apple's website makes it pretty easy to see all the different options. So when you go to buy the Mac Mini, you're gonna see all of their base configurations, which you're typically able to get pretty quickly. The first thing you gotta decide is if you get the M4 or the M4 Pro chip, and this is gonna change a couple things with the computer. So the M4 supports 120 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth, and the M4 Pro goes all the way up to 270 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth which is basically gonna allow the CPU and GPU to communicate faster with the RAM on the computer, which is gonna be nice if you're doing a lot of more intensive video editing, photo editing, 3D rendering tasks like that. Another big difference between the M4 and the M4 Pro is the number of CPU and GPU cores you get. So the M4 has a 10 core GPU and a 10 core CPU. The M4 Pro goes up to a 12 core CPU and a 16 core GPU, which is gonna drastically boost your video editing or your other 3D design, things like that. Those types of performances are gonna be boosted by the M4 Pro chip. It'll also greatly aid in music production if you're processing a lot of plugins or a lot of tracks that require higher CPU performance. Where the M4 and the M4 Pro really score about the same is if you're just doing day-to-day -day tasks like office work or productivity work, word processing, other things like that. You're really not gonna notice a huge difference between the two of them in that regard. Another difference, the M4 Mac Minis have Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back and the M4 Pro has Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back, which Thunderbolt 4 goes up to at 40 gigabits a second. Thunderbolt 5 is 80 gigabits a second, but boosted to 120, which allows you for higher display bandwidth on it, which is gonna be nice if you're wanting to use these with a dock or multiple high resolution displays. That's when you'll appreciate the Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back of them. Thunderbolt 5 is still pretty new though, so it's really more of a future-proof thing. Also, the SSD speeds are drastically different on these computers depending on the chip that you get. This seems like a processor thing to me because I've compared 512 gigabyte SSDs on my M4 and M4 Pro MacBook Pros, and I noticed the same speed difference. The M4 Pro starts with 24 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. If you get that same 24 gigabytes and 512 gigabytes on the M4 computer, it's gonna be $400 cheaper. So you're basically paying $400 to get the M4 Pro chip. So it's really up to you to decide if you think you need that extra performance. I'd say most users are gonna to be totally happy with the M4 chip. And for most of my video editing tests, I only found the M4 Pro to be marginally faster than the M4 computer. But it's gonna depend on your use case. And I would say if you plan on having the computer for a very long time, and if you're gonna be using it professionally for creative work on a day-to-day -day basis, that's when you should probably get the M4 Pro. Otherwise, I would just stick to the M4 and save your money because the base model one is gonna be drastically cheaper. So if we go into one of these M4 computers, we can start to configure all the different options. Now, the first thing we gotta decide is RAM. So 16 gigabytes is a great starting point for most people. It's gonna be fantastic for use with multitasking. And even with the 16 gigabyte computer, I didn't find myself needing to pay attention to how many apps I had open. Mac OS was doing a great job at handling anything I threw at it. So I'd say most people are fine with 16 gigabytes of RAM, but if you're gonna do a lot of video editing, photo editing, or if you're gonna go and do some music production on this, I would say go ahead and upgrade to 24 gigabytes of RAM if it's within your budget. But the real thing I would recommend upgrading is I would not recommend buying the 256 gigabyte version of this computer unless you plan on doing everything on the cloud because once you start to put some apps on, some project files, you're gonna really quickly fill up that 256 gigabytes. So I would say the 512 gigabyte SSD storage, even though it's $200 to me, that is mandatory. And I bought the 256 gigabyte M4 Mac Mini and I really regretted not going up to the 512. So I would strongly urge you get the 512 before you upgrade the RAM. And then if you want, you could upgrade the RAM if you're planning on using it for more professional-based work, and that is gonna bump the price by an additional $200. The next thing that you need to decide is if you wanna get the gigabit or the 10 gigabit ethernet. Really all this means is you get the 10 gigabit ethernet if you plan on using this with a NAS, and if you're gonna be using a lot of files over a local area network, that's where you'll appreciate the 10 gigabit ethernet port because you can always add one later on if you really needed it, but there's only three Thunderbolt ports on the back of this. So I would say get that if you know you're gonna be using this with a NAS, otherwise I would skip it and just get the gigabit because that's gonna to be totally fine for most users. If you're using this with Wi-Fi, it's not even gonna matter. 
and then I would not buy Final Cut or Logic Pre install on this computer. I'd recommend either starting with the demo or if you already own them, as soon as you sign into your Apple ID, then you're going to be able to download them from the App Store just like that. So there's no reason to add that on it as well. So there's my recommendations for configuring the Mac Mini. Go up to 24 gigabytes of RAM if you're going to be using it for heavy creative work. Go all the way up to 32 gigabytes of RAM if you plan on using this for a long time and you really want to run a ton of apps. Otherwise, stick with 16. Definitely get at least the 512 gigabyte SSD because the 256 will fill up really fast. You could always get the one terabyte as well if you really want to have a lot of video files on this, but I would say most people who do a lot of video work are going to be running this with external SSDs anyways. And then don't get the 10 gigabit port unless you know you're going to be using the computer with a NAS. Most people should get the M4 chip. It's going to be totally fine, have plenty of power, and all my workflows have been able to work on this just fine. The M4 Pro just runs a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient, and has the better GPU performance. If you're interested in buying a Mac Mini, I do have links for my favorite models in the description below. If you need any help picking out a computer, also look in the description below for a link to my website where you can fill out a form and where I'll get back to you and help you pick out a Mac computer for your use case. If you're looking to buy accessories for your Mac Mini, then I have a whole video where I talk about all my favorite keyboards, mouses, docks, and other accessories for the M4 Mac Minis. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.